So before I get started, I need to get something off my chest. So my shirt says, after a few drinks, we all become just a small town girl living in a lonely world. <laughs> and I must confess, I love getting together with my girlfriends and having a laugh or two over a bottle of wine or two. Um, but I wore this shirt today because it really kind of exemplifies why gender health disparities are a real issue for women in the United States. But, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, and I tend to do that a lot, so let me back up. And let me give you guys the real headline. There is a frightening trend in the declining life expectancy for women. So you guys may have seen headlines like this recently uh, in the news media. CDC data shows U.S. life expectancy continues to decline. Or Americans are dying even younger. Or, and you know, this one is my favorite in the doom and gloom department. U.S. life expectancy declines again, a dismal trend not seen since World War I. What these headlines leave out is that it is women who are dying younger and at faster rates than ever before. Okay, so I'm a scientist and a statistician, which means I love numbers. I really do. This has been a fun day for me. So let me apologize right now to all of you because I'm going to fall into scientific and statistics speak quite a bit. So hang in here with me. In 2014, life expectancy at birth was 81.2 years for women and 76.4 years for men. And from 2004 to 2014, that gap in life expectancy between men and women decreased from about 5.1 years to 4.8 years. Okay, so that's only a difference of about 0.3. And I know that sounds really small, but I want you guys to think about this. Think about how many more women in this country must die at a younger age to move that statistic even 0.1. Earlier this year, I lost both of my parents, my dad to a sudden heart attack and my mom to complications from dementia and a stroke. My dad was 72 years old, and my mom was 70. According to the averages, my dad missed out on four potential years of life. But my mom, my mom missed out on 11 years. Y'all, that's more than a decade. And even more than that, because she was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of dementia at the age of 65. So... I want to tell you guys a little bit more about three main reasons why we are experiencing premature death as women. And the first, well, and let me back up because I, again, I get ahead of myself. Uh, there are alcohol, smoking, and anxiety and depression. And I know we've heard a little bit about that already today, but I want to embellish a little bit. So let's just start with alcohol. Did you know that alcohol affects women differently than men? Upon drinking equal amounts, and that's equal amounts, women have higher levels of alcohol in their blood than men. And the immediate effects of alcohol occur more quickly and last longer in women than in men. Gender differences also make it more likely that drinking will cause long-term health problems in women than in men. Problems like liver disease, memory loss, which can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia, heart damage, cancer, and the increased risk of sexual assault. With all that we know about the negative effects of alcohol, we still seem to be living in a society that celebrates a casual drinking culture. Think about all the messages we get. I mean, hey, 
Look at the t-shirts that we wear. And also look at social media, which all of these outlets seem to suggest that life is just more fun with a glass of wine. But let me come back to some numbers. Approximately 46% of adult women report drinking alcohol within the last 30 days. And approximately 12% of adult women report binge drinking three times per month, averaging five drinks per binge. Think about that statistic, ladies. Five drinks per sitting, three times per month. Okay? And 90% of people who binge drink are not alcoholics. So that's a big deal. So another reason for premature death, especially in women, is smoking. And can you believe that this is still a thing with women? Obviously, we are not getting the message. Over the past 50 years, a, women's, a woman's risk of dying from smoking has more than tripled and is now equal to that of a man's risk. And men are quitting smoking faster than women. Okay, congratulations, guys. Smoking kills 202,000 women every single year. So why are we lighting up? Well, it could possibly be because smoking helps us lose weight. Could also be because maybe we need some stress relief. Or maybe we just think that smoking makes us look powerful. The third thing I'd like to talk about, and probably the most devastating to women's health, is anxiety and depression. And I want to reiter reiterate that this one's a big one, you guys, because anxiety and depression can lead to other issues in our life, like drug abuse or even suicide. Depression is the number one cause of women's disability in the United States. And women are more likely to have a serious mental illness than a man. And we're also more likely to be diagnosed with anxiety and depression. I have struggled with generalized anxiety disorder over the years, and I've had to work very hard to come up with healthy ways of coping with my own anxiety and stress. Related to anxiety and depression is the overuse of opioids and the rising incidence of suicide. Women make up 65% of total opioid prescriptions in the United States, and 40% more women than men will become persistent opioid users following surgery or injury. Opioid use is so pervasive that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has declared a state of emergency around opioid abuse. And over the past decade or so, there's been a 50% increase in suicide rates among teenage girls and women. Here in Georgia, in our state, the highest rate of suicide belongs to the 45 to 54 year old age range. How many of you guys are in that age range? Yeah, this is scary because this is my age group and these are my women. So what can we do? As women, we must be bold in working to reverse these trends. We need to confront these problems head on and we need to examine the underlying issues. We have to continue to educate ourselves and also educate those young women that are sitting around us today. We need to improve our, our thought and our ideas around self-care. There's a reason why flight attendants tell you to put your own mask on first before helping everyone else. For me, self-care is what I actively and deliberately do to take care of myself mentally, emotionally, and physically. 
we all need to come up with a healthy self-care routine. So maybe we should go walking with our friends instead of going drinking with our friends. We can also begin to surround ourselves with brilliant women. I believe that we should all have what I like to call a personal board of champions. Now, a board of champions is just a trusted group of people, individuals in your life, that come from all different walks of life. For me, my board of champions include previous colleagues, independent women who own their own businesses, friends who are stay-at-home moms, friends who don't have kids, older, more experienced women, and also a millennial, because she just kind of keeps me up to date on all the latest and the greatest. We don't often meet as a group a lot, but these are the women I can count on. And you guys know who those women are in your lives, right? These are the women I can count on when I have something going on in my life, like this year with losing my parents. These women keep me accountable. So within our board of champions, we should share our stories and realize that silence is not golden, as we were once maybe taught to believe. My mother, kind of like most of her generation, thought that self-care was selfish. But I firmly believe that if she had talked about her dementia symptoms early on with her friends and her family, she might still be with us today. Also, and kind of finally, I want to, to, to say to you guys that we need to get curious, okay? Curious about ourselves, but also curious about the women around us. So I want to end really quickly with an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement that we will all lose women in our lives far too soon. I lost my mom at the age of 70. Maybe it was your mom too. I want to charge each and every one of you to fight for yourself. And I want you to fight for the women around you. We need these women. Let's turn these trends around so that we are in each other's lives for a long period of time. Thank you.